quote at thehartford.com slash small business. With insurance designed for your small business, the Bucks got your back. This is The Buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. The Buzzard. The home of the Buzzard. buzzard. This is 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. I believe we have another winner on the phone. What do you think about that? This guy's a weirdo. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. All the other stuff aside, it's going to be worth it. The Bill Squire Friday get down is mere minutes away. It's how we know around these parts that the weekend is officially underway. Uh, Dr. Ryan Berglund is here uh, for a bit longer from the Cleveland Clinic for a segment we call Is It Red? So, guys, if you've got a question about maybe some uh, issues you're having down there, uh, he uh, hopefully will be able to help. 216-578-1007 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. You can text me 35192. Uh, pretty convenient uh, that all of a sudden Mary started feeling bubblegum. And poo-poo. she <laughs> had to get out of here uh, before uh, the get down. How are you doing, Pound Cake? I'm starting to feel the bottom drop out. I'm, I'm glad that we're towards the end of the program. Like, I can, I can feel it, but it's like towards my back. It's not... It's not in my stomach, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm starting to sweat, so (laughs) we're going to be out of here none too soon. Hey, Randy, hello. How are you doing? Good. What's up? I got a kind of a multifaceted problem. I'm going to try to explain it real quick. There's many steps to it. Uh, First of all, I jammed it during intercourse, and it was sore for a couple of days. And after a week or two, it formed a lump next to where it comes out of my body. After that, a couple of weeks, maybe a month later, it started getting narrow, looking from top down. The narrow has worked out almost to the end. The last inch and a half remained the same size it used to be. And then now the end of it is bent upward a little bit. I mean, what is going on? Sounds like he's got a divining rod or something. Mm. Uh, it, it's embarrassing. Huh. It sounds like Peyronie's. And so, um, you know, one thought uh, about the cause of Peyronie's is some kind of trauma that, that's happened. And, and clearly you had a had traumatic intercourse. You got some scar tissue. And the scar tissue is um, – it, it's hard sco- scar. It's not elastic like the rest of the penis. And so that area will, will kind of stiffen and harden. So as the rest of the penis expands, it curves uh, in the direction of the scar. So um, – What's with the narrowing? Uh, same thing. It's scar tissue. Okay. It's it's like a constrictive band of scar tissue. Gotcha. And um, it, go ahead. It started where the lump was, but the lump mm-hmm. had went away, and then it started to narrow, and it worked its way down over time. It, it It's scarring down. So my guess is that you actually tore the tunic allogenia, which is the strength layer around the, the penis that allows you to have an erection. You probably had a tear there and are getting a scarring reaction. And... Um, and there are things that can be done about that, but that is, you know, that's the kind of thing that doesn't go just go away on its own. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that can be done for it? Yeah. I mean, first of all, the first question you're going to be asked is, is it interfering with your ability to have intercourse? That it, part still works. Okay. Um, and so really the things that can be done can potentially affect your ability to have intercourse. So oftentimes you'll be discouraged from doing it if you are still able to have successfully have intercourse. But if you can't have intercourse, the, the lesion and the curvature have been stable for a year, and uh, the curvature is um, more than uh, 30 degrees. That, that's something that can be, can be corrected either through injections or even surgical corrections. So you would recommend a uh, urology an appointment, right? Would that Correct. The, the, the thing is, it's not interfering with your intercourse, and how long have you has it been stably curving that direction where it's not changing at all? I'd say five months, maybe. Okay, so you're kind of getting out. Yeah, you're kind of you're you're kind of um, uh, getting out there, but that's something that can be can be looked at. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Randy. How would people call the Cleveland Clinic, Doctor Berglund? One eight hundred CCF Care. A texter says, um, my worst fear is having kidney stones. What can I do to try and prevent them from happening to me? 
drink lots of fluid, water, not not sugary drinks. Um, <laughs> drink lots of Mountain Dew, Baja Blast. <laughs> um, drink when I first met my wife, she was very prone to kidney stones, and she was just in agony. When she had our daughter, she's like, this is nothing compared to those kidney stones. Oh, I mean. They're no joke. They're horrible. If, if you're prone to getting them, drink plenty of water. Squeeze a lime or lemon in, into it. Um, that it has citrate, which is really good. Um, make sure you, you uh, avoid frequently and eat a healthy diet. You know, um, diets that are that are high in kind of um, uh, animal proteins, um, sugars, salts. They're not good for you, and they, they create an, a, a situation where you're more prone to f- forming stones. Hey, Corey. Yes, hello. Corey, hello. What's your question for Dr. Berglund? Hey, what's up, Doc? Hey, um, I was wondering, is there such a thing as foreskin reconstruction? You want to recreate the foreskin? Yes, yes. It was uh, taken from me when I was a helpless child, and uh, I want it back. Yeah, I mean, actually, we're hearing more and more of this, of of people that want to get their foreskin back. Um, You know, can you some other part mm-hmm. that's not something that I, that I offer but I imagine a, um, a creative reconstructive urologist or plastic surgeon could come up with something there um, but you're not the uh, first person to ask me about that there are a lot of guys that oh, want really? that back yeah. yeah and so what is the thought behind this I mean the implication is that because you can feel more when I you want ha- it back Alan right but I mean how old I are no you choice in it. How old? I had no choice in it right but why do you care Corey because I care I don't know. You don't know. Cool. Well, that's why. I mean, might uh, be cool to him. I, I'm just I, the only reason I ask is because for something that sounds really invasive and laborious, I would certainly hope somebody would like really know why they wanted it done. And uh, I, I'm always fascinated by that. People are like, "Oh, I didn't have a say in the matter." I mean, I didn't either, but I'm perfectly fine with it. All right. Um, yeah. It might, I think it might be cool. You know. <laughs> well, you might be you. right. I mean, you know, it's your thing. You should do what you want to with it. All right. Thank you, Corey. There's you know, Corey. It, this is an interesting discussion because the rate of circumcision has gone way down in the United States. You know, it uh, yeah. used to be 75% of the of the male population was circumcised at birth, and I think it's below 50% now. What? Well, I, I think, yeah, because there's been so much of a push on this, like, it's barbaric and blah, 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 you know, that Those over the past kids. couple of decades, that's really taken root. But as you've explained here, it's not um, uh, being uncircumcised is not without its issues. There are issues on either side, right? And, yeah. and you know, his point is that it's you, you can't get it back. Um, there, it, you, you, it's very unlikely that you'll get penile cancer in your life if you have a circumcision at birth. And it, it likely does reduce the transmission, the heterosexual transmission of HIV, which, um, what, you know, was, was a big deal in, in sub-Saharan Africa where there were very, uh, you know, a, a large proportion of the HIV transmission was through heterosexual sex. Um, but it's, uh, that's becoming less and less of an issue. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, a concerned girlfriend texted me and said, what is the treatment for phimosis and what is the post-care? Uh, phimosis, phimosis? Phimosis is where you can't retract the foreskin. Okay. So, mm-hmm. and paraphimosis this is This guy that what... just called about to have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants it. He's going to pay for it. So, phim- phimosis is where you can't pull it back. Uh, paraphimosis is where you've pulled it back and then you can't get it back into its normal position. Mm-hmm. And that's even worse. Um and that, that can lead to a, to a bad problem. So phimosis, the solution is uh, some variation on a circumcision. And you can do something called a dorsal slit where you just open a little bit of it, oh. um, just enough so that you can pull it back, or you can just you can take the whole thing off. Uh, paraphimosis, there are ways of trying to retract it back. Sometimes you have to do it in emergency circumcision. Hey, John. Yes. What's up, John? Hey, how's it going? Good. So my question for the doctor is, I've had three hernia surgeries in the last two years. Uh, first hernia was a uh, umbilical, and then the last time I had two hernias done at one time, they were it was bilateral inguinal mm-hmm. hernias. Ever since I had the inguinal hernias taken care of, uh, it's it's affected my it doesn't affect my ability to have intercourse but one of my testicles wants to rise and it keeps it keeps causing an issue where it's like 
it's uncomfortable, you want to kind of try and push it back down. Yeah. Is that something that's caused from maybe a procedure done wrong, or is it or, or is that like a, a likely uh, after effect of hernia surgeries? I mean, you know, I, I that's a tough question to answer, and, and it's one that would probably require examining you, but. Um... Certainly, having a hernia repair, having a mesh put down right where the the, 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 the cord is, can affect the, the testicles. But it sounds like you've got normal testicles. Um, it would be something I need to, to look at, but but that'd be unusual. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like I need to make a uh, an appointment with the urologist. I, I would actually go talk to the surgeon who did who did your hernia surgery, and that, that oh, okay. because they can they can look at it and, and walk you through it. They did the surgery, so that, that's really the first stop. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Uh, Here's an email. I'm hoping to lose over 60 pounds. Is it true that for every 30 pounds lost, an inch is added to your penis? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what the exact statistic (laughs) is. I've never heard that kind of math. I've never heard an inch. I've heard like a quarter inch. (laughs) It's it's more of a, it's more of a optical uh, illusion. It's an optical illusion. It's, uh, it's that you're, you're seeing more of it. You're not having that, that buried penis phenomenon, but it doesn't actually make the penis itself um, larger. You're skinnier. Yeah, so right. it looks bigger. Yeah, there's less there's there's less uh, tissue around it. Mm-hmm. To... Uh, Texter says many people, including myself, who deployed to Iraq, returned home with ED. Have there been any studies to show what causes that for soldiers? That's very interesting. The first I've been made aware of it. I, what I usually do in, in with those kinds of questions, I direct patients to the VA, which has a I, you know, has a good track record of, yeah. of helping people through that. It might be as simple as just. Trauma, right? PTSD, I mean, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. PTSD. Absolutely. That, that'll affect a lot of stuff in your life. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, please. You have the floor. Mr. Brown. Okay. Is there any, can you irritate your prostate if it gets too much action? Is that a thing? <laughs> like, like I'm just think think about it. if it's getting action. How much every, is too much? Yeah, if, if it's getting action every Why? day, can it be irritated? Can that cause problems? It, it, do you need to give it a rest? Like, wh- what is the deal with it? I mean, it, everything's relative. I can I can dream up you know scenarios where yes, I mean, it, it, what it are you can, irritating it with? Yeah, bad jokes. It's probably <laughs> good to rest your prostate occasionally, right? Or can can it make it so you can't reach like do you or, an ice pack? Like, what if you can't reach orgasm in, until, you know, it, you rely on your prostate? Like, is that a problem? He's getting numb to the prostate, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I had to ask these questions because I, yeah, I understand. Yeah, you yeah, might as well I, do it I, now. I, 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 you know what? I'll, I'll be honest. I don't have an answer for you. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. Has, have you ever had a patient come in and say, hey, you know, this is a problem for me. My prostate has had too much action, and now, you know, I can't finish without it. Or, you know, it's— Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying— because it sounds like your penis has had too much action, and that's why that's decreased the sensitivity to the point where now you need the prostate to be engaged in order to. Uh, I'm, I'm just setting up the scenario. This isn't me. <laughs> yeah, he's asking for a friend. Bill. <laughs> They've developed a callus. <laughs> Hypothetically, if right, someone so, to get along. So, if, yeah. so if your friend Bodie Crown. <laughs> uh, was just curious, that's all. We were talking a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Berglund, about this guy who had to go to the ER because he was putting those button-sized oh batteries God. into the oh. tip of his penis. And they got, this is an older man, like a 76-year-old guy yeah, 70, yeah, who was, was like, oh, I enjoy it, and I do this. You know, we've mm-hmm. talked about sounding here on the show and whatever. And another bad one are the the little uh, ball magnets. Um, they, right. And there have been guys that have done that. We had we had one that, that came in, and the, and the problem is they get into your bladder, and then they're just a mass oh, of strong God. magnets. Oh, come yeah. on. And, um, and actually, little kids You're will walking around getting things. stuck to every car that you pass. And oh, yeah, little kids. Those <laughs> are <a> big... <laughs> Well, a little kid swallowed a magnet, and then I had one in my balls. And I, that's how it happened, officer. Yes. Likely story, sir. This is not what it looks yeah. like, sir. Well, because somebody texted me that they have a huge pee hole. And is there something wrong with that? They said it's wide, oh, wide open all the time as if a straw was sticking inside it. I mean, you know, I, uh, I'd have to see it on the descriptions. Of, uh, you <laughs> Just know. lucky, I guess. <laughs> Whip it out. Yeah. <laughs> Sounding like Dune. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... Um, as long as he's not having any urinary problems, the the the, the actual opening, the meatus, uh, can vary in size. And I've seen some very, you know, large ones and small ones and, and everything in between. But uh, what do you prefer? 
<laughs> <laughs> well, for my purposes, trying to get a scope into a small one can be really a, okay, ooh, see, a like problem. Yeah. Yeah. Get that roto rooter in there. Yeah. Hey, Zach. You like the ones that look like the sandworms. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm here. What's up? Uh, so, nine months into a marriage, I developed some bumps on the base of my penis, and I confronted my wife, and she assured me, no, I hadn't cheated. I went and got tested, and it was called something called molluscum contagiosum. Contag- contagiosum, yeah. Right, but as I'm looking at it, like, uh, it's been almost a year and a half now. They haven't gone away, and they're, they're not developing those yellow heads. Mm-hmm. Um at time, I've, like, I don't know how to say this, like, torn them or scratched them off. Um, I've done the cryotherapy, but they've come back. What, what should they're, I do? They're diagnosed molluscum contagiosum. Are that, those sexually transmitted? It's it's a it's a viral. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a viral uh, problem. So, so his wife's lying. Well, I, it, it, you know, that's what he thinks. I, I don't know. I don't know any of the details. Right. You, yeah. care, you have to be careful uh, about that. And Doctor Berglund, Doctor Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but I mean, uh, that—that's what Zach suspected. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I, I did. I did. But you know, I, I, I've known this woman. She is wholesome. I, I, I don't believe it's something. So, so this is a type of pox virus. So. Like young kids get it in different parts of their body. And, yes. You know, if you touch something, they get yes. it. You oh, okay. Get it. That is correct. Uh, there's okay. other ways of getting it. There are, okay. there are yes, to that roll is correct. That out. Gotcha. I, I wanted to rule that out. Yep. But now it's just um, my body isn't getting rid of it within that year to a year and a half. And it usually does go away, and that you're, you're making a good I, point. Um, I, I've done the cryotherapy, which was extremely par- painful, and, and then it, they just come back. Um, what are my next steps here? What do I do? I, I saw the apple cider vinegar, uh, peroxide treatments people are doing, but before I branch out and go do anything, I, 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 I'm going to have it listen to the show, and I wanted to call and get I, I would. I, that's kind of the point. So who, who was burning it off? Was it a dermatologist or was um, it a urologist? No, I, I, I saw it out once I had the bumps, and then I went to uh, actually get tested, and that's they they took a look at it and saw the white centers, yeah. but they've never developed to where they turn to the yellow or the pussy or anything like that. So they're just you know they're they're usually they're there. Sometimes they get to the point where you can scratch and pull them off because you're just irritated by them. But you know, have you been under the like, care of a dermatologist for this? Them. Have you seen a dermatologist for this? No. Should that be my next? Step? I, I would see a dermatologist because I again I want to confirm the diagnosis. That that really is what what you're dealing with there. Um, By yeah. the description, where where they get to a certain point of darkness that you can scratch or rip them off almost. Is I wouldn't do that please. because if it really is a viral um, lesion, you're just going to make the problem worse by ripping them off. So you, you right. don't want to do using that. peroxide, not alcohol at the same time, and then you know bandaging up, trying to be aware of that. But it's, it's gotten to the point where, like, I'm in La La Land. Like, why hasn't my body I, I would, healed? I would, I would, I would go to see a dermatologist for that. I, I, it just seems like you need a you need a pro to, to take a look at those things. I say keep ripping them off. Oh god, <laughs> terrible! All right, good well, luck, Zach. You decide thank who you, you want to listen to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Ryan Berglund. Thank you again, pal. Always uh, saving lives, winning hearts. Making uh, men and women swoon when they tune in. How do people get in touch with you or uh, anyone of your ilk over at the Cleveland Clinic? Yeah, for appointments, 1-800-CCF-CARE. Beautiful. Uh, thank you again. Always appreciate your expertise. Thanks for having me on. Is it right? Does it itch? Does it hurt like a bitch? Is it right? Is it right? Is it right? Bill, are you ready to begin the weekend? Oh, yeah. Hey! All right, the Bill Squire Friday get down in honor of the late, great Murray Soul here at WMMS. It's how we officially begin the weekend. Take it away, William. It's Friday! And you got to to get down on Friday. I'm going to play some mini hoops in Willoughby and Frank and Tony's place while Alan and Mary and Pound Cake are all going to go home and poop some lava. Poop lava, poop lava, poop lava. It's Friday!